fun, let's go outside, let's take a walk in the sun. There are things to learn and things to see, a big wide world for you, your dog, and me. Dog Talk. Hi, folks, and welcome to Dog Talk. I'm Pat Becker. You know my co-host, Rusty. And Louise Cook is with us today. How are you? Good, thank you. And you brought Ruby. Yes. And Ruby is a Karen Terrier. Right, right. So tell me, where did you find Ruby? Ruby was a rescue. Ah. Um, her owner had to give her up because uh, her family brought home some dogs that um, Ruby was not getting along with. Oh, well, so, you know, they can get that kind of attitude. They rule in a household, you know. Right, right. <laughs> she does. <laughs> so uh, she gave uh, her to a neighbor, and, and to make a long story short, uh, Pat... Um, was Pat White from the Karen, which uh -huh. used to be the Karen Rescue, right. eventually got in contact uh, with the right person, the person that um, had the dog. Uh -huh. And got you connected. And got me connected. How super is that? And so, so how long have you had her? Uh, a year and a few months. Oh, fantastic. Well, God bless you, because this is, this is a rescue. You know, she was in a situation which might not have ended right, happily. Right. So you have given her a new home and a forever home. Mm -hmm. and, and as I say, we have made her the dog of the week. Ruby, you are the dog of the week. Yes, you are. And this is a $100 gift certificate to A1 well, Pet you. Emporium. And Ruby can have all kinds of little treats and things that, whoa, what is that? Ruby, what is that? She said, I'm not sure. She likes squeaky toys. Does she likes squeaky uh -huh, toys? She I'm does. so glad. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, as I remember, we did a uh, a video on Karen Terriers because they are such a dominable breed. You know that they are uh, just precious, precious pets. So we did one, and I think you were in that video, were well, you not? I think I was. I think you were too. <laughs> and since I knew you were coming, I thought you might like to see it. Okay. Would you like to see yes, it? Yes, I sure would. We'll do that. I got a call recently from a group of ladies who insisted I do a video on Karen Terriers. All of these women are seniors and seem pretty intent on their mission. I was a little bit afraid they'd make me stand in the corner if I refused, but loving Terriers the way I do, I knew it'd be fun. So I told them that if I complied, they would have to agree to participate, and they did. We began our video with a Karen Terrier icon. Who can forget Dorothy in the movie The Wizard of Oz and her wonderful little companion Toto, who accompanied her on this experience and went to Munchkinland? Well, that little Toto was a Karen Terrier, and that little Toto superstar helped a great deal in making this breed of dog very popular in America. So join us as we discover the wonderful world of Karen Terriers. You'll enjoy it. I wanted to discuss the standard of Karen Terriers and a little bit about the history of this breed. So we visited with Barbara Lewis. So this, this is the ancestral breed, really, of Terriers like this. The, the Skies and, and all of those that came after. This dog was, uh, I guess, what, in the 15th century? In the 15th century. And actually, you know, of course, their original job was to hunt and kill vermin. And so mm -hmm. they're very independent yeah. That's also part of the standard is their personality. They're supposed to be very independent, very active. Very, very focused. Very, very focused. focused. Like, like all terriers, but this one especially. And can you imagine a dog of this size hunting fox or otter? You know, Absolutely. Those these, animals are bigger than this dog. That, that is exactly right. So they had to have a great deal of courage. They have to have a great deal of courage. They also have a high tolerance for pain. Mm -hmm. And so... You can't, you have to really be watchful because if they're injured or sick, they don't necessarily show you that they are. Mm -hmm. Tell me what the standard is for this breed. Well, Pat, you know, every breed has a standard that when a breeder breeds dogs, they try to breed the perfect dog. And so the standard describes what a perfect dog is. And for a Karen Terrier, 
Uh, some of the things that they look for is their eyes should be sunken. They should be on the front of their head like his are mm -hmm. rather than on the side. Mm -hmm. The ears are small and pointed. Mm -hmm. The uh, tail is erect, but it's not carried back over their back. It just should be erect and stand up straight. They have a level back. Um, they can be any color but white. Mm -hmm. So they come, this is a, considered a Wheaton. The Wheatons typically have dark uh, ears and dark muzzles, muzzles and sometimes a dark uh, tip on their tail. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Barbara. We appreciate this information. And I know that everybody who really likes terriers will love this one because you're so cute. Yes, he <laughs> is. I next found a Grand Champion Karen Terrier at a local AKC dog show and had a quick interview with his owner. You are a handler for this dog? Um, are you the owner? I'm a breeder owner. You're a breeder owner. Mm -hmm. Well, it is a beautiful, beautiful standard of this breed. Thank Just you. Just absolutely adorable. We're getting, looking forward to seeing you in the ring. So how long have you been breeding Karens? Probably for about 25 years. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, then you ought to be well experienced in this. And this one is such a jolly, beautiful little dog. So is this a male or female? It's a male. This is yes. a male. Yeah. So does this dog have points on its Yes, its he has his championship. He got his championship points, and now we're going for a grand championship. For a grand champion. I am so impressed. Well, we will let you go and get ready to do that. And looking okay. forward to, to seeing you in the ring. OK. Thank Take you. Care. Dr. Chris Rispoli was on our list for consultants to check out information about the health of Karens. Dr. Rispoli, how are you? Good, thank you. I understand that you know about these Karen Terriers. A little, yes. Yeah, you know, they are wonderful little pets, but I was wondering about any predispositions for illnesses. They have a few, but, uh, but overall, they're a very healthy dog. Uh -huh. What we see mostly in the clinic is uh, allergies, which can come in the form of ear infections, tear staining from the eyes, draining, or skin problems. Mm -hmm. Internally, or do they have a, a device? A diabetic kind of uh, no the, the diabetes happens more in the adult females that are older and intact that mm -hmm. haven't been spayed ah. um, but in my 16 years I've never met a diabetic Karen mm -hmm. so it's very rare mm -hmm. well thank you so much thank we you it's nice to talk it. to you when we research a particular breed of dog I always seek out someone to talk about the nearest rescue for that breed and we definitely wanted to find out that information about Karens. So I asked Pat White. I wanted to find out about rescues. What rescues are available for these little dogs? Yes, um, the first is the Karen Terrier Club of America, who has um, a national rescue system. Mm -hmm. There is another national rescue called the Colonel Potter Karen Terrier Rescue Network. Mm -hmm. And then a little closer to home uh, in Oklahoma, there is the OK Westie Rescue, which not only rescues Westies, but also Karens and other Terriers. When we finished our research, I asked each of the ladies to describe in their own words the personalities and value of these little dogs. Karens are the essence of terriers. They are bold, scrappy, independent, hardy, yet very cuddly. Karens were bred for specific jobs, and they take their jobs very seriously. One of them is keeping the vermin free from barns like this. Keeping vermin away by digging them up. Karen Terriers make great friends. Oh, you're so cute. These women will admit to being amateurs when it comes to the business of the dog industry, but they are totally professional Karen Terrier advocates. And as a finale, they asked for Nancy Haddock's coaching and they tried their hand at agility. I think that if these little dogs had had professional handlers, they probably would have done very well. However, I noticed that the dogs and the ladies got great exercise that day and much fun. And I'm sure that they all slept very well that night. <laughs> that was so a great cute. video. I can't believe you hadn't seen it before. In the break, Ruby's really been uh, loving on us, so it's fantastic. Yes. yes. Uh, coming up ne next, uh, Sher uh, Sherry Lanier will be joining us. It'll be great. See you after the break. 
Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. So Sherry Lanier is here. Sherry, what's going on? Well, it we are partying down. It's party time. We are party making time. yeah, shoot. We have parties at the store for dogs and for for humans. Oh my and gosh. so we just make all kinds of things to take, uh, different dog treats to take and we focus on, you know, their health, something that's going to stabilize their glucose level and be good on the tummies. Wow. So, yeah, gosh, we can make all different colors, all different shapes and sizes. So when you when you have your puppies as you're as you're doing this, uh, when you have the, the dogs there, what do you do besides give them great treats? Well, well, you can you can get them involved in I want to say different uh, activities uh -huh. throughout you know throughout what is set up, and that keeps that keeps their entertainment uh -huh. keeps them great. entertained. Do you ever have little costume contests, or do you well, have that's like that's probably the funnest part? Yes, well, well, that's Pat, the fun. We that's have a great nice picture. Uh, hat we want you to try on. You can oh, put on a little pink one. I think different would be sizes. Oh, you yeah. think? Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be I'll great. tell you what, Rusty, <laughs> you be the first one then. Oh, look there at that. you go. Amazing what happens when I open open my mouth. There you go. I'm surprised that I don't have anything to eat this time. Last time. You know, brought, well, I'm gonna you put know. I, sh I should have done that, you bet. Well, there we go. Good you know, on you. Good. That we matches go. your outfit. I picked Look it up because you. it was blue. You see that? I love you see that, that very yeah. much. So now there we go. Okay. There we, we're and ready. So we have some different shapes and sizes for different sizes of dogs and different breeds and different themes. So uh -huh. you can have you can have themes and it's a lot of fun also for kids. I think kids probably have as much or more fun. And if they want to do a kid and a dog. Um, party. <laughs> We're going to have a blast and I have different it. things. I love it. Sure. Well, you know, you hear about people giving their dogs birthday parties and things like this, but this is a perfect setup. You've got the place, you've got all of the ingredients for a great party. You bet. You know what we ought to do? We ought to have a party contest. I think that's great. Now, that would be fun you know, and interesting. Yeah. What we can do is have people uh, get in touch with you on your Facebook page okay. or something and apply for their dog being the party host. And what we can do is that you can select one of these dogs okay. and, um, and dog, part, uh, dogs, <laughs> dog Talk will sponsor sure. it. Oh, well, dang, that'll be a lot of fun. Yes, yes I can't wait to tongue tied. I'm so excited. Oh. Okay, so this will be, be so cool. And uh, so, yeah, we'll, and we'll, maybe we'll video it, too. Wouldn't oh, that be great? That would be even better. That, that way fun, fun. everyone okay, could folks, enjoy now it. now you know it. You go online and go to her Facebook page. So what's your, what's your Facebook it's page? It's Barking Dog Bakery. All right. There you go. Just yeah. go to Barking Dog Bakery and put your dog's name in there. Tell a little story about it, maybe a picture, and you could be the winner. That would be great. And you get to come and have fun with this. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. Fun. Sounds great. Uh, coming up next is uh, Haven of Hope. It'll be great. It's a good rescue. We'll see you after the break. Okay. All right. Here's a quick tip for helping your dogs maintain a normal body temperature throughout the summer season. Provide cool water pools for them to hop into. Plastic baby pools are great. Also, new plastic cement mixing tubs are very inexpensive and sturdy. Provide plenty of fresh water daily, keeping buckets and pools in a shaded area. If you have a covered patio, provide your dog with a comfortable blanket or bed. And remember folks, the heat you feel is twice as hard on your pet. Hey, Dog Talk fans, make sure you join the conversation on social media. Just go to facebook.com slash dogtalktv. We'd love to hear a story of your furry friend, so send us an email to pat at dogtalktv.com. You could be featured as our Dog of the Week. Now, enjoy the show.
I am D Miles, and today we are at Haven of Hope. And today we're going to be given a tour by Lori and Richard. So come on, everybody. Let's see what's on the other side. So Lori, tell us, how did this all begin? Well, it began many, many years ago when I was a little girl, and I believe strongly that I was born with a love of dogs in my heart. And it's always been my dream to be able to help lost dogs and needy dogs. And about eight years ago, the love of my life came back into my life. And thank goodness he has a deep love of dogs too. And we talked about my dream and he started his mission of helping me achieve it. And so we've grown in seven years from accommodating about three dogs to now being able to accommodate about 50. And uh, we uh, bring in dogs that are in need, whether they be uh, dogs at high risk in shelters, um, or dogs that are abandoned in the country, or dogs that have been abused or neglected or have health issues. We focus on last chance dogs that have no other hope. And we bring them here and we give them time to recover and get their bearings and we do health assessments and temperament assessments and behavioral assessments and we find ways to help them recover and then we work to find them homes for the rest of their lives. So. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's clear that y'all have a passion for what you do. Now, Lori, you told me that y'all had a lot of different things going on. Yes, we do. You also told me that last year y'all had 75 dogs adopted. Yes, we did. Now, I've told the viewers about your passion. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like we are standing in your garage. Is that correct? That is correct. You talk about passion. Lori and Richard are working outside of their garage. So where did all of these items come from? Well, the Piedmont Intermediate School decided to have a donation drive contest in which the sixth, seventh, and eighth graders at Piedmont Intermediate um, work to gather donations for, of items that we need, which is food, treats, chewies, uh, milk bones, just all kinds of stuff, paper towels, cleaners, uh, dish soap. And the class that brought the most items got a field trip to come to see all of our uh, dogs and puppies at Haven of Hope and get a tour of the facility. We couldn't do it without the support of our community and the business leaders that support us and our volunteers and the people who donate money and the people who pick up dog food for us and transport our animals to the vet. I mean, there's a lot of people involved in helping us do this work. That is fantastic. For our viewers, what Lori didn't tell you is her and Richard are working 14 to 18 hour days and they're also a 501c. So you know that means they are not getting paid to do what they are doing. So as you can see, they greatly appreciate all of the support. Now, Laura, you've told us today that the mission here at Haven and Hope primarily centers around last chance dogs, mm -hmm. high risk dogs. Help us understand how or what it is you do to help you know, a special needs dog be able to transition back into a loving home. How does that all happen? Well, it first, the first step is to evaluate the dog and, and bring them in uh, to our facility, give them time to decompress, observe, you know, watch their behaviors, and uh, give them time to get accustomed to their new environment, offer them calming things to help them relax and not be afraid. Uh, we use music, we use chew therapy, we use hands-on. And when people think about special needs dogs, they think, oh, they, they have something wrong with them. But that's not always the case. Special needs can mean everything from a dog that's just afraid of people right. to a dog that's been harmed and uh, has different uh, psychological damage because of that. Okay. Other special needs can be physical problems. And we focus on trying to help those dogs that have no other hope. Um, but we just let them have the time that they need. And however long it takes for them to get to that place, they have it. They're always safe here at Haven of Hope. Haven for Hope has been doing this, rescuing dogs since 2009. And as you can see, they have grown. So, we're going to break some ground. Just kidding, they already broke the ground. Here behind us is going to be the new Haven of Hope. 
Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, but you already have uh, contractors that have donated to help build the building. Yes. So could you tell our viewer, viewers what are some other things you need to bring this new haven of hope to fruition? We will need to finish out the inside of the building, which means we will need sheetrock and lumber. We will need uh, sinks and cabinets, light fixtures, everything that you would need to make it operational. We will need the support of our community and anybody who wants to help us, we would love to have you help us. I hope everyone has had as much fun as I've had today. If you're in a position to donate time, money, a paintbrush, if you're able to do any of those things, hang some cabinets, maybe a ceiling, please go to the website. And one last time, Lori, the website is... It's havenofhoperescue.com. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. Hi, I'm Dr. Jean Sander, Dean for the Center for Veterinary Health Sciences at Oklahoma State University. The beds of pickup trucks are intended to haul stuff. Using that part of the truck to give joy rides to children or pets is a really bad idea. Please, don't do it. Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Bartles. This is my dog, Spencer. He and I go hunting as often as we can. When we do go out in the pickup, he rides in the cab. He's never in the bed of the pickup truck, never. The pickup bed is for my stuff, not for my dog. Spencer stays with me. I'm Dr. Lara Sipneski. Your dog may think it's cool to ride loose in the bed of your pickup truck, but he's a dog and he doesn't think about the consequences. Do you? No one, no one can guarantee you that your pet won't jump out, fall out, or be injured traveling loose in the bed of your pickup truck. It's not cool, it's stupid. I'm Dr. McKernan with the Small Animal Surgery Service at Oklahoma State University, and I'm here to invite you to view these images from dogs that have fallen out of the back of pickup trucks. Injuries sustained including pelvic fractures, leg fractures, a broken back, all because their owners decided to let them ride in the back of a pickup truck. This is completely preventable. There really needs to be a law against this. I hope we've impressed upon you how serious we feel here at Oklahoma State on why dogs should not ride in the backs of the pickup trucks. It's a serious problem that we see across the country. Over 100,000 animals are injured each year. Just don't do it. So we're going to talk today about books. And Fantastic. of course, these are the ones that we are very feel very strongly about. These are our books, mm -hmm. and we're Actually, uh, I wrote these books for a mission, you know, Rusty. It's just to get people to understand, to take care of their dogs. The responsibility of dog ownership is huge. I agree. Some of these about the, the hunters, I think, are interesting. All of these dogs were mine, mm -hmm. and I actually gave them to, given to me by uh, different people and rescued. And so I kind of devised a history for them um, in the previous time that I had known them. But... These dogs are precious, they were wonderful animals. And what I really want to, uh, to also talk about is the, the book drive that we have through Best of Books in Edmond, Oklahoma. Yeah, and they have a book drive called uh, Best of Bob's Books. Bodacious <laughs> Bob's. Bodacious Bob's, Bob's Books. Bob's Thank Bob's you book. very much. And um, we are sending them out to all the schools. There are some schools that are their budgets have been cut, so the libraries are very short on books. So this is another thing, folks, that if you are uh, affiliated with a school, a charter school, any of the schools that need books, these are wonderful. Not just I who donate some of these, but all of the other authors in this state actually donate a book to go with these. So we've got multiple amounts of books and they're all very, very good. Some of them for very young children, for elementary school, some of them for older children, 
in, in high school and junior high school, but they are all really, really good reading. The one that we have here, which is I Love Being Me, has a DVD with it, so it's really, really good for kids. Uh, they watch it, they listen to it. I have had reference from someone who said their child is autistic, mm -hmm. but reading this book to them, watching it, and have them watch the DVD has really helped them. So, so, so this is a great read-along, it and it's a, a great, way to, to encourage reading, but also exactly, get content Exactly. As well. Children, because of the DVD, get really into it, into the lyrics, into the words and everything. And so it is really a, an, excellent, an excellent thing. And of course, you and I both know that we do push videos and books for kids mm -hmm. because this is where we get kind of influence their minds maybe on a positive, positive way, you know, to become uh, better dog owners, you know, to, to get familiar with dogs, to understand dogs. Um, I, I agree. I, I think, you know, the what you do is amazing and to be, be able to, to write these books and, and give back is fantastic. But to be able to educate the young person because they may not get that elsewhere or what they see on another program this allows some more content. So you're, you're sneaking in some learning in there. How dare you, Pat? That's well, you fantastic. know, we, we hope that it will have a positive effect. There is no question about that. And, you know, videos are wonderful too, guys. Be selective about them because some of them uh, can be entertaining, but maybe not the kind of uh, content that you want your child to be exposed to. But books, books, books. I want everybody to start reading. When that child holds that book in his hand or her hand and they read, they learn to read that way. They learn to interpret. They learn how to articulate. Right. And it, that is, that's the thing that I just, that I really love. So, you know, folks, be advised. It's a good, good way to go. Um, also, you know, we want to talk about the things that you want to see. Uh, the entertaining things, the educational things, anything that is informative and will help you with your dog. So we really would love to have you uh, get in touch with the Facebook page and let us know. Email. Let us know what you want to hear. Let us know what you want to see, and uh, we'll do that. Yeah, it's great. Rusty, thank you so much. Absolutely. We will see you next week. about big dogs, uh-huh, talking about little dogs, oh yeah, chasing the ball, chasing the cat, digging whole thing like that, dogs, talking about dogs, laughing dogs, sad dogs, happy dogs, mad dogs, dogs, just talking about dogs, lost and alone, running the street, checking the garbage, looking to eat, out there sad and on their own The law will get them if they got no home Dogs Talk about dogs Dogs We're talking about dogs You say they were angels sent from above And a year or two later you fell out of love You dumped them man and kicked them out Now what the heck was that about? Dogs We're talking about dogs 